Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I wanna show you the 10 ways that you can actually make money with real estate, even if you have zero money, how you can make money with real estate. But first, I have to show you how not to make money with real estate, and that's by referring to this guy. This is the CEO of Zillow, who was on CNBC this morning. He uh, seems to, I, I mean, I, I get it, but his version of Zillow and real estate is that, well, housing, that's the thing at the top of your needs list, right? So you should invest in housing, which all right, I'm, I'm not gonna debate that part. I'm gonna debate something else in a minute, but just listen to him say that. Yeah, it turns out, David, that we uh, in the shelter business are really lucky. Uh, we didn't know when this first hit and the fog was thick where this was going to go. We didn't know if the real estate market would just seize up like an engine without oil. Uh, and so we were scared and we took really quick protective actions. to. Protect and then obviously now we know that at the moment, at least thanks to forbearance and all that good stuff, the real estate market's actually been pretty good. But the thing that I really wanted to hit on was the last like 30 seconds here. What he suggests or says is a big regret for a lot of buyers. We're going to start with that. I'm going to talk about that. And then we're going to get into the 10 ways that you can actually make money in real estate. This was his suggestion on what people currently regret and what they're thinking about buying which, uh, spoiler, big mistake. Remember that? But the top of the pyramid of Maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization, it's art. The very bottom is the basics. It's food and shelter, okay? And it turns out we are really together, all of us right now, focused on food and shelter. That could be a decent mm -hmm. proxy for, for Jim's, you know, COVID index, actually. What's in that bottom <laughs> uh, rung of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Anyway, that's driving a whole bunch of agitation uh, to move, to get a second place. If I hadn't had one, the people that didn't buy a second home are really regretting they didn't have a second home right now. I don't exactly know how to respond to this other than let me just say this. Do not go buy a second house. It is the stupidest thing you could do with real estate right now. And I have to say, I don't think that housing is doing well right now because people need shelter. Okay, I think that's super oversimplified. I think people are going nuts over real estate right now because you could get a 30 year mortgage for like two and a half percent interest at some lenders. That's nuts. Like, why would you not go buy a house at that case? But this whole second home argument, dumb. Worst way to make money. You'll go there way less than you think. It's a maintenance hassle. That is a classic example of a liability. Do not buy a second house. It's stupid. Unless, of course, you're going to like Airbnb it or whatever. But, you know, then, then you're airbnb -ing it, right? You're treating it like a business. And then you're using your business occasionally for personal use. You know, that's, that's something else. That's between you, your CPA, and your attorney. But now let's get into the actual 10 ways that you can make money with housing. And the reason I got inspired to make this video was, well, mostly because of this guy. Uh, but the second reason I wanted to make this video was because... There's a lot of push uh, on, on YouTube and, and across our industry, whether it's stocks or real estate or whatever, to heavily focus on the only way that anybody thinks we can make money, which is cash flow. And that makes sense, right? When we talk about stocks, the sexiest stocks to talk about, dividend stocks. Come on, baby. Look, I got a, a hundred grand sitting in at t stock right now that I cannot wait to sell as soon as I buy my next real estate deal and I'm moving that money right into real estate. But the point is, those that stock is yielding like 7%. They get a 7% dividend on that. That means literally sitting around doing nothing, not looking for deals, not investing, not dealing with tenants and toilets, nothing. I'm making 588 bucks a month doing nothing other than having money sit in a dividend stock. Of course, that is the most sexy way to make money. Do nothing, get paid while you sleep, sign me up. Duh. But... That is only representative of one way to make money in real estate. And so we get distracted with, well, dividends are good in stocks. Well, let's also find the highest cash flow we can. And look, if you live in a high cash flow area, I love you. I think that's great. I think that's wonderful. Uh, but it doesn't work everywhere. And so a lot of folks look at real estate and say, well, you know, this isn't going to cash flow as well as it would if it were in this area. So I'm not going to buy in this area or I'm not going to buy at all, which is usually what ends up happening is people don't end up buying at all. And they never get into real estate. They never get into building their wealth and they never make it. Look, I did it in Southern California. 
one of the most expensive markets in the country. I got a little breakdown of my story of how I built my net worth down below. And it utilizes a lot of what I'm about to tell you. So here are the 10 ways to actually make money in real estate. And then hopefully this will open up your eyes to all of the opportunities that real estate can afford you. Obviously, you know, there are other ways to make money in stocks too. I'm not saying this to say you should invest in real estate over stocks. I'm just saying when you're looking at real estate, consider all of these things. Okay, here we go. Number one appreciation. Obviously, real estate goes up in value. This is an easy one. The cool thing about real estate, though, is if you put $10,000 down on a $100,000 house and the market appreciates 10%, you kind of just basically got your down payment back, right? I mean, not really because you'd have to sell and you'd have selling costs, but in principle, over the long run, you get more appreciation in real estate because you control more money with a smaller amount of money. You put 10% down, you control a $100,000 asset. That goes up in value faster than your $10,000 could. Of course, you should have a tenant paying your bills for you so that way you don't actually have to pay the interest on the mortgage because you're getting a loan for 90 grand. The second way to make money in real estate, current tax benefits. Look, if you run a business and you get paid $2,000, you have to pay taxes on that $2,000 unless you take cash payments. And if you're, if you're somebody who likes cash payments, look, I like cash payments too. You should still report your taxes, okay? It's kind of like how you should still get your two free stocks with Webull. When you deposit $100, you get two free stocks up to $1,400, link down below, right next to that link for life insurance. Of course, you know you should do that. You know you should sign up for those two free stocks and get your life insurance. But you should also know that you should pay your taxes. So the current tax benefits is the beauty that in real estate, you could get paid $2,000 in rent, but thanks to tax benefits like property taxes, insurance, maintenance, management, utilities, reserves, depreciation, and interest, you can actually not have to pay taxes on the income you're receiving. So a tenant gives you $2,000, I got so many tax benefits, I might not have to pay taxes on it. I can now grow my net worth tax free. That's the second way to make money. The third way to make money in real estate, not paying taxes on selling the properties. When you sell, you could do a 1031 exchange and prevent having to pay capital gains taxes. The 1031 like-kind exchange is probably one of the coolest things about real estate. The fact that you don't have to pay taxes when you sell, but it gets even better if you hold the real estate forever, you never have to pay taxes. You could literally tell the government, I'll catch you later, you sell, you do a 1031 exchange, hey government, I'll catch you later, I'll catch you later, I'll catch you later. And then your children and your family can get a stepped up tax basis and you literally never have to pay taxes on real estate. That's the third way you make money in real estate. So first way, right? Appreciation. Then you got current tax benefits. The fact that you're getting paid and you don't have to pay taxes. Then you got the fact that you technically never have to pay taxes on any of your real estate gains, which is absolutely insane. The fourth way you make money, principal pay down. Every single month, the tenant's paying you, you're paying off that loan. That means your net worth is going up. That's a simple one, right? Fifth way to make money in real estate, monthly cash flow. That's obvious. That's like getting the dividends. That's cool. That's wonderful. It's just one of the ways to make money in real estate. It's not the only way to make money in real estate. The problem with monthly cash flow, though, is if you're in your earning years, you actually get taxed out the butt because monthly cash flow becomes this income that gets taxed heavily, especially if you're in a state like California. My ideal scenario would be literally at, at, in my earning years having zero cash flow, but building my net worth as large as possible. Then when I retire, take that net worth and move it into cash flow producing assets, move it away. And so that way I'm actually playing the game, right? I'm minimizing my taxes when I'm making a lot of money. And then when I want to retire, I move my assets over to high cash flow producing things when I'm not making an income. So then my taxes are lower. That makes more sense. It doesn't make sense to drive around in a Lambo making a million dollars a year or 500 grand a year or 100 grand a year or whatever. If you're working, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense to make a lot of money and be working full time and then also try to get as much cash flow as possible because you're getting taxed out the butt. You'd be better off literally refinancing it, having more tax benefits and doing something else with that money than having cash flow right now. You almost want to try to prevent cash flow when you are in your earning years because you get taxed so heavily. Keep that in mind. Depends on your income, obviously. Not saying cash flow is bad, just saying 
It's just one of the ways to make money and it kind of gets hurt by taxation. The sixth way to make money is, well, there are three other ways now that we're gonna talk about making money and all three of these ways have to do with buying real estate below market value. When you buy real estate below market value, you can, number six, wholesale or assign deals. So for example, somebody did this to me. They got a deal under contract for 400, like, I don't know, probably $20,000 or $430,000 or whatever. They sold it to me for $450,000 just by assigning the contract to me. They did nothing. They pocketed 20 grand. I got a deal for $450,000 that's worth $650,000. I just went through the effort to fix it up. So they made money doing nothing. That's the sixth way of making money in real estate. You get control of a good deal. You, once you have control of that deal, you make money by wholesaling it or assigning it to somebody else. The key here is finding a good deal, which is exactly what I teach you in my investing course. In fact, I teach you all of this in detail, how to do all 10 of these things. I don't just teach you in my course, look for cash flow. No, I teach you all of the things because it all matters. Wholesaling and assigning, great way to make money. You can literally make money with zero money. You can flip real estate with zero money out of pocket. You can borrow money, buy a really good deal. If you find a really good deal, you could flip money with zero money out of pocket, or you could flip a deal with zero money out of uh, pocket. Uh, it's more risky to have zero money out of pocket, but if you have a really good deal, that protects you. And so then you could buy, let's say that $450,000 place, put 50 grand into it, then sell it for 650. After your selling costs or whatever, you end up with $600,000. You were into it for five. You just made a hundred grand profit with zero money out of pocket. That's one way to make money in real estate too. You flip real estate, great idea. Method number eight, you buy and hold. You do that same scenario, but you don't spend the 50 grand selling the property and you just hold it. And then you refinance and you use the extra money, the extra net worth you created to purposefully lower your cash flow, but then go buy other deals. Because by lowering your cash flow, you're lowering your taxation, but you're actually increasing your net worth because you're going out and doing more deals. Okay? Now, number nine, the ninth way to make money in real estate. Could you believe that there are actually 10 ways to make money in real estate here? Like, we're not even done yet. It goes to show how much money there is to be made in real estate. That's why I love real estate so much. Number nine, inflation protection. You're worried about putting your money into a high yield savings account and it wearing away because of inflation. Golly, if you're worried about that, put your money into real estate or stocks assets that are associated with the market protect you from inflation because the more money people have, the more money people put into assets, which gives you sort of this base boost. It's kind of like the rising tide in the water or in the ocean or whatever. Everything kind of goes up together by at least what inflation is. And then you kind of grow on top of that surface. Not saying you want to grow on top of the ocean, but you know what I mean. Number 10, it's a leverage tool. Remember how we mentioned earlier, appreciation is a way for you to get money? Well, I also mentioned that when you buy and hold, you make money because you build your net worth. You flip, you build your net worth. But when I mentioned that you could use real estate, uh, you know, you could refinance and take money out and go buy another deal, that is its own way of making money. Buy and hold is one way to make money. You build your net worth. But when you refinance, you take money out against another deal and you leverage against something else and you go buy something else. And now you're able to do another flip because you were able to get a loan at 3% or something stupid low. That's a leverage tool which puts money in your pocket. The 11th bonus way to make money in real estate, being a real estate agent. Being a real estate agent could be a great opportunity for you to literally start with nothing, apply the principles that I teach you in the investing course. In fact, I teach all of my agents, start with the investing course. When you know how to invest, then all you have to do is market yourself after that and you will be a wealthy, successful real estate agent. You have to learn how to invest. So there you go. 10 with a bonus way to make money. Don't listen to the Zillow CEO. Get out there. Don't buy a second home. Don't buy butter. Don't waste your money. Instead, focus on building wealth, finding below market value deals. Quick bonus. How do you find below market value deals? You look for deals that are fixers in the single family space. They're over improved in the single family space. You find deals that are below market value in rent in multifamily or you arbitrage, which is like Airbnb. So you can see the amount of ways to make money here, way more than just, well, it's got a cash flow. It's way more than that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on cash flow. I love cash flow. I'm just tired of seeing people think 
I can't get started in real estate. I can't make money because my area is too expensive. It's very simple. There are many ways to make money in real estate. You just gotta figure out what's gonna work best in your area. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Consider subscribing. Check out Lauren's new vlog that she just posted. You'll see me doing some funny things at the end, and you'll get to see a little bit of the behind the scenes of the office. And folks, we'll see you next time. <laughs>